Hi there. As part of our study of the labour market, we're going to take a few minutes to think about the concept of marginal revenue product of labour, or MRPL. So we use MRPL when we're deriving the demand curve for labour in the, in the labour market. The demand curve for labour tells us how many people a business is willing and able to employ at a given wage rate in a given time period. And in the theory of a perfectly competitive labour market, the demand curve for labour uh, is taken from the estimated marginal revenue productivity of labour. So marginal revenue product of labour, MRPL, is defined as the extra revenue generated when a firm employs an additional worker. There is a formula for this. It's the marginal product of labour multiplied by the marginal revenue of the output that the worker creates. Let's work through a numerical example and at any point in the video you can just press the pause button to, to gather your thoughts and take some notes. So here we have a firm that's employing extra units of labour from 1 through to 7 and we have some information on the total output of labour per week. Total output's going up as we employ extra units so that allows us to calculate the marginal product. Remember that the marginal product is the additional or the extra output as a result of employing one more worker. So the first worker adds 10 to output, the second worker adds 14, the third worker adds 20, and so forth. So there's the marginal product of labour in our third column. Notice that from the fourth worker onwards, the marginal product is declining. This is the idea of diminishing marginal productivity. And this is assumed in the model. We're going to assume also that each unit of output created by workers has a market price of $20 per unit. Okay, and that the average revenue equals the marginal revenue. The price is the same. So if we multiply the marginal product by the price, we get the marginal revenue product, which here is expressed in dollars. Okay. So one unit of labour employed, marginal product of 20, uh, 10, 10, sorry, multiplied by $20 gives $200. Once diminishing returns set in, the marginal revenue product of labour falls. So notice there the diminishing returns. I've put everything in green. The fourth worker adds only 16 to total output, the fifth worker 12, the sixth worker 8, and the seventh worker adds only 4 units of output to the production process. So the marginal revenue product of labour curve in a competitive labour market is the demand curve for labour and MRPL will fall when diminishing returns to extra labour set in. I've highlighted in bold red here the marginal revenue product of labour and the firms of course are assumed in this market to be profit maximisers. They'll choose a level of employment that maximises profits. So they have to think about two things. One is the marginal revenue product of labour and secondly, the marginal cost of employing labour. We're going to assume that each worker employed costs the firm $160 per day. So that's the marginal cost of, of labour. Well, at this wage rate of $160, the firm optimises by employing six workers. If you look at the table, when six units of labour are employed, the marginal product is 8, giving a marginal revenue product of 160. And the marginal cost of employing labour is also 160. Now, were the firm to employ the seventh worker, it would cost them another $160 to do that, but they'd only get $80 of extra output, of revenue from the output from that seventh worker. So a profit-maximising firm should employ workers up to the point where the marginal revenue product of labour, MRPL, equals the marginal cost of labour, and that's at the sixth worker employed. There we go. That's the basics of marginal revenue product.